Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I'm going to talk all about the uh, sea ice, both uh, in Antarctica and in the Arctic, because, you know, as you know, um, it's uh, been declining rapidly. And in fact, we may have even had a regime shift or a tipping point with Antarctic sea ice over the last few years. Of course, uh, all bets are off if the AMOC uh, really does uh, slow down significantly because the northern hemisphere will get a lot colder, the equator therefore will get a lot warmer, the southern hemisphere will get a lot warmer. You know, if you look at what's been happening in the last uh, few months, uh, well, the last month in North America and Europe and so on, um, it's actually been quite cold. Um, we've had a quite cold spring um and they're getting baked uh in the equatorial regions and it's super hot in the southern hemisphere so you know let's see what happens i mean the amox slowdown is over you know basically decades but it is significantly slowing down so you know all bets are off on say arctic sea ice vanishing for example it'll be the antarctic uh, sea ice that vanishes <laughs> first but anyway let's have a look at what the data is telling us and let's look at some of the um uh, press release uh, articles that have come out in the last, uh, you know, in the last uh, few weeks, actually. Okay, so, um, and, uh, yeah, okay, so this is, uh, I'll come back to here, but this is Charctic, so change in the Arctic interactive sea ice graphs, it's the Arctic and Antarctica. This is Antarctic sea ice extent. Um, and here we are for 2023, the record minimum, like, and, uh, 2024 is in there in the noise somewhere. There it is. 2024. You can see that curve. Uh, so it's higher. It's not as low as 2023. Um, also you can change, switch to the Arctic and look at what's been happening. This is the record minimum and you can see where we were. Uh, actually, I can't uh, show all years. 2023, you can see, uh, actually, don't show all years. Hide all years. Well, I just want to look at 2023. Okay, so much below the norm. 2024 is heading over here right now. Okay, so this is a very, very useful... Um, uh, useful uh, data set. Okay, but I'll get back to that. Let's have a look at why we're talking about this. So here's an article uh, from a week or so ago. We were in disbelief. Antarctica is behaving in a way we've never seen before. Can it recover? Now, the I, remember these tipping points. Okay, so when we get a tipping point, you have a small change, you cross the threshold, the system reorganizes and gives you a massive change from a small nudge. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back is just crossing that threshold. Um, so, so, and uh, the problem with these uh, tipping points is there's something called hysteresis in many of them. So if we actually cross the tipping point of the AMOC, and the AMOC does take a rapid dive. It's been dropping rapidly, but if it dives off the cliff, reorganizes and cools the northern hemisphere, warms the equator in the southern hemisphere, if we dial back the temperature, you know, we have a magic knob and we dial back the temperature, um, like putting sulfur in the atmosphere or something for the magic knob, uh, then um, we might not necessarily get back to a steady state because, uh, you know, we can there's hysteresis. So d depending on the direction you're moving for past a tipping point, it can be delayed and you can be stuck in a state once it tips, you know, no going back. Um, so this is, uh, you know, what we're up against. This is a very severe risk. So anyway, we were in disbelief. Antarctica is behaving in a way we've never seen before. Can it recover? It's been disappearing a lot over the last several summers. It hasn't been forming as much during the winters. Climate scientists are wondering whether it will ever come back. So that's the article. Okay, so basically today, much of the sea ice is nowhere in sight. Scientists are increasingly alarmed that it may never come back. 
Okay, Antarctica feels very distant, but the sea ice there matters so much to all of us. What, right? What happens in Antarctica doesn't stay in Antarctica. It's not like it's not like Las Vegas. Uh, you may have heard that phrase for the Arctic, you know, from many years ago, and and uh, you know, <laughs> it's one of my one of my favorite phases that I uh, came up with. Okay, so of course the sea ice on both poles is a very vital part of our climate system. You know, until recently, Antarctic sea ice fluctuated between relatively stable summer minimums and winter maximums. It had a record minimum in 2016 and things shifted from then on. There were two record lows that followed, including the smallest minimum ever in February 2023. It was 1.91 million square kilometers. So if it goes under a million square kilometers, we call it a blue ocean event in the Arctic. You know, we can also have this blue ocean event in Antarctica, 737,000 square miles or 1.91 million square kilometers. So it's, it's not much above, it wasn't much above a million square kilometers. You know, as winter began um, in March of 2023, Scientists hoped the ice cover would rebound, but what happened astonished them. Antarctic sea ice experienced six months of record lows. At the winter's peak in July, remember the southern hemisphere is reversed from the northern hemisphere as, tar as far as winter and summer goes. So at winter's peak in July in Antarctica, the continent was missing a chunk of ice bigger than Western Europe. We all thought that the minimum was as bad as it was going to get. It was 2023, not 2070. So the models were saying this wouldn't happen till 2070, believe it or not. You know, so when winter came, they were in disbelief. Well, it's time they start waking up and believing and, you know, seeing what's going on. In 2024, the sea ice reached another near record low, 1.985 million square kilometers. Um, compare that, that to the record low of 1.91, you know, essentially, you know, just slightly more, but under 2 million square kilometers. So it looks like we've had a profound regime shift or phase change, or maybe crossed a tipping point in Antarctica. So what's next? Right? When you push any part of the climate system, it has ripple effects that are felt all over the world. Not necessarily immediately, but many years down the line. So by pushing the system more and more, we're making these ripples bigger and bigger, and eventually we're going to feel them. So what do you think is going to happen with no sea ice or lack of sea ice in Antarctica? It means that the water temperature is much warmer. It means that the calving of glaciers on the land and also the, you know, the ones that are sitting, um, resting on bedrock well below sea level, those are all going to have much more rapid melts because this taking, getting rid of the sea ice is like taking the cork out of the bottle. Okay, so when summer turns to winter in Antarctica, sea ice expands from its minimum of about a million square kilometers. That's normal, three million square kilometers, a million square miles rather, three million square kilometers. And it goes as large as 7 million square miles, a factor of seven increase, or, uh, you know, that's actually close to 18 million. Seven times three is 21. But anyway, you can do the conversions and check. 18 million square kilometers. That covers 4% of Earth's surface in irregular uh, porcelain white tiles, the floating sea ice. Most of the sea ice grows in winter during the week's long polar night, complete darkness upon areas of open water on the floating ice shelf that wraps around the continent. So there's fierce winds from inland and that pushes the ice around. You get these seawater holes in the ice or polynyas inside, inside the floating ice shelf and those freeze when it gets cold and then they're sprinkled with snow. So the sheet builds up piece by piece. Of course, the coastal ice is very important. Um, this mode of sea ice keeps warming seawater away from the continent's uh, precarious land ice, protecting its hanging glaciers, right? Reducing the calving rates when there's sea ice, no sea ice, the uh, ice on the land melts that much more quicker. Like I said, it's like taking a cork from a wine bottle. 
Okay, um, and with the sea ice being highly reflective, um, the albedo effect, the more ice there is, the colder it is around Antarctica. There's also a huge biosystem around the sea ice, uh, penguins, krill, krill feast on the photosynthetic algae that grow around the ice platforms. The poo uh, locks away carbon dioxide that then falls to the ocean floor. So it's a huge sink of carbon. And uh, without the sea ice, that's likely to also reduce. So sea ice helps drive the conveyor belt of ocean circulation, right? When the sea ice melts, it lets cold water cascades from the continental shelf. It drives the deep water further down and out. It fuels basically these chimneys, which um, cause mixing between the surface water and the water down below, driving the ocean currents of the planet. 40% of the global ocean traces its origins to the Antarctic coastline, so it's vital to regulate climates, regional climates around the world. So the, the growth of the sea ice in the winter in Antarctica, the decline, it's like a heartbeat. Um, it pushes nutrients, oxygen, heat around the world, draws carbon down into the deep ocean. Roughly 30% of carbon emissions are trapped for hundreds of years in the deep ocean. Okay, so for most of recorded history, this sort of ocean heartbeat cycle and its impact on carbon cycling and ocean circulation was steady, but basically it skipped a beat in the last few years. Okay, uh, we often talk about the Arctic, where we've had a steady plunge in ice coverage by more than 12% each decade. Antarctica was beating the odds until 2015. It wasn't just holding fast, it was actually growing slightly. It was growing about 1.5% per decade, the Antarctic sea ice. Hit an all-time high in 2014, since, since you know 2016, 2015, 2016, there's been a precipitous fall. Um, and scientists aren't sure if they're observing a fluke event or an ominous fundamental shift. We often don't know which it is until we look in the rear view mirror. So, you know, at some point in the near future, we can look back and say, yes, we crossed this tipping point. Um, so what's happened in the last seven years might continue since 2016. And they talk about the albedo feedback, talks about the warming of the Arctic being four times faster than the rest of the world. Well, we're gonna be talking about these numbers for Antarctic right um so it's basically a disaster for the planet okay before 2016 scientists held out faint hope that antarctica's complex system was temporarily stabilizing the global climate now that hope has has faded you know look at this beautiful photo of these uh you know the the ice plates and so on Okay, there was a paper uh, late last year, uh, Doddridge, and I'll show you that paper. Um, they provided the first clue that the shift in the Antarctic sea ice wasn't just a freak event, right? In 2015, the Southern Ocean began warming at depths of 330 to 660 feet or 100 to 200 meter, meters. It stayed warm ever since that water down below. You know, a sea ice loss tends to occur in regions of high ocean warming, right? This is uh, the, the, this warming of the water just under the surface changed the way the atmosphere and ocean interact to form the ice. So the Antarctic is behaving differently. Call it the new Antarctic. Um, before the apparent shift, there's no connection between sea ice found at the summer minimum and that at the winter maximum, right? One would vary, the other wouldn't, but now they're, they're strongly linked. There's less ice year round. Um, and of course, the dip uh, has caused mass die-offs of thousands of emperor penguin chicks in Western Antarctica. In 2022, Eastern Antarctica had the biggest heat wave it's ever recorded. Temperatures climbed about 40 Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit above normal. So the deep ocean current surrounding Antarctica, they've already slowed by 30% since the 1990s. That's a huge drop. Okay, so that's just over uh, 30 plus years, 35 years. They're predicted to slow by a further 40% by 2050. So we've changed the way that heat and 
and uh, nutrients and oxygen. We've changed the way things flow around the planet in the in the oceans. Okay, now science, despite the accelerated response caused by reverse albedo feedback, scientists are careful not to call the Antarctic sea ice decline an irreversible tipping point. Right, generally, if you look at global tipping points 2023, the report I've discussed in great detail in the last number of videos, they talk about the, the sea ice as not being really a tipping point because if it cools down, it'll just come back. But it has so many other effects on other parts of the climate system. You know, they remind us that if the West Antarctic ice sheet broke up and melted, sea levels go up about uh, 11 feet, 3.4 meters, thought it was five meters. Uh, what I know, uh, the problem is the AMOC slowing down and the AMOC has been in a downturn. If the ocean current were to weaken as much as it did during the last ice age, temperatures in Europe and North America could drop as much as five Celsius within a decade. So we're talking about a de decadal sort of time response, as I've mentioned in my uh, previous videos on Global Tipping Points 2023. Okay, so, you know, and they, they give the usual, the only way forward is to decarbonize and, <laughs> okay, sort of that's a mandatory um, sentence in all of these papers. Okay, so this is from a month or so ago, Antarctic sea ice behaving strangely as Arctic reaches below average winter peak. Okay, so we can have a look, um, you know, we, we can have a look at the, uh, they talk about the Arctic sea ice. Um, they talk about the, uh, you know, the decline of Arctic sea ice, the temperature anomalies. This is Zach Leib, follow him on Twitter if you don't. Temperature anomalies of, of 10 Celsius above the 1981 to 2010 reference period uh, in the, uh, you know, the, the Arctic Ocean, um, Arctic Ocean region. And uh, then we can get down to uh, variability, Antarctic. Antarctic behaving strangely. Okay, so this is the Antarctic sea ice extent on February 20th, 2024. Okay, it's the white areas and the median sea ice extent for 1981 to 2010, the climatology is the orange line. So you can see where these huge amounts of sea ice are missing in 2024. This also happened in, in 2023. Okay, so this shows uh, the minimum sea ice extent 2023 um, was, it says 1.79 million square kilometers on February 21st, 2022, 1.98, 2024, 1.99. Okay, it just blew away the previous, uh, you know, well, it's only behind, second place behind 2022. And then the numbers were higher um, in previous years, but all of these years since 2015, 2016, are, are really, really low. So the Antarctic has been behaving strangely, Mark Ceres, director of the National Snow and Ice Data Center, tells Carbon Brief. You know, so this is a guy who said a lot of conservative things about climate. You know, it takes a lot to convince him. And he's getting concerned about this. He says, in the fast, past few years, the Southern Hemisphere summer extent has dropped to record lows. Before that, we saw record highs. What has changed? The answer seems to lie in the ocean. More warm water getting up to the surface to melt ice or to keep it from forming. Is this a temporary effect? Or as many have argued, have we entered a new regime in which the ocean will continue to strongly affect the sea ice? Again, we must wait and see. We usually have to look in the rear view mirror to see these sort of things. Antarctic conditions in over 2023 were truly exceptional and completely outside the bounds of normality. You know, like, you, you know, think of all the uh, descriptions you want, flowery language. I mean, there's something serious going on down in, in, in Antarctica. Uh, I googled just Antarctic sea ice and looked at the most recent, uh, you know, articles and stuff. Um, and uh, NASA Earth Sciences has a good report, uh, article, current state of sea ice cover. They talk about the Northern Hemisphere 
and the um, also the uh, to the northern hemisphere the norms and where the ice is so it's still dropping and this the, the uh, also you know this is uh, extent they talk about area okay area is uh, the um, completely covered with sea ice and then extent is uh you know it has to be at least what 15 percent or something covered covered for uh extent and then there's antarctic uh, ice extent um and you can see uh you know what's happened how low 2024 has been um same thing with 2023 this is the maximum extent um the minimum is sorry the red line and the maximum is the uh, is the uh, yellow line normally, and here's what we get, w what we have now. Okay, uh, sea ice area. Okay, so there's lots of data out there. Um, if you just Google National Snow and Ice Data Center, you can read their uh, article. Um, they don't have one in May yet. I could, let me refresh this and see. Uh, no, it's just uh, April. So they do every month or so. They do they do an article and they're talking about the Arctic and the Antarctic, and they they compare data from previous years. Uh, the Earth Observatory. This this is just a good movie showing. Um, let's see if I can get it working. Play. Is it playing? It's loading. Let's just wait a second. The NASA Earth Observatory often has lots of very good data when it works. Okay, so you can see the, um, yeah, it's working now. You can see the changes in the ice, the pulsing. This is the, uh, you know, the minimum in the Antarctic summer and the maximum. And, you know, so when the Arctic sea ice is a minimum, the Antarctic sea ice is a maximum. They're out of phase, right? And you can see the, the norms here, 1981 to 2010 median is the yellow line in both cases. And we're just missing huge amounts of ice. I mean, it's coming back, it's disappearing all the way back to the coastline and has huge implications on, on the climate. National Snow and Ice Data Center, um, the general uh, page and then you can actually get a lot of earth data a lot of data sets from it and this is where i got the uh charctic uh interactive sea ice graph which i showed you at the very beginning so this is for antarctica you know this is a 2023 record minimum you know way it dropped off a cliff at the minimum and then it continued off you know being record lows you know, for most of the, uh, most of 2023. So like we really, uh, you know, honey, we, we've broken, broken the planet. Um, and we can look at Antarct the Arctic rather, and you can see, you know, how, how the uh, record minimum occurred in 2012. And we haven't surpassed that. So, you know, we've come close in a number of years, but, uh, you know, so, and we're not going to see this blue ocean event if the AMOC continues to slow down. It's estimated that there's about 30% more Arctic sea ice now than there would be if the AMOC hadn't been slowing down. So the AMOC is definitely having an effect in stabilizing a bit, or at least in maintaining ice in the Arctic, sea ice in the Arctic, and uh, dev devastating and crushing the sea ice in Antarctica. Okay, so the whole system is related. Uh, this is a daily uh, index viewer to see what's happening, uh, you know, monthly and daily, again, from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. There's a report here. If you go to Sea Ice Index version 3, 75 page report on how they actually measure the sea ice and the extent, the area, um, the satellite, the products on the satellites that are doing it, multi sensors and microwave channels and sensors and so on you know and how they've been measuring it accurately since 79 you know they describe the instruments the usage periods of each instrument 
There's, there's some older instruments being re replaced with newer ones, like this one just came on board January 1st, 2023. Um, different platforms. Um, so they talk about the satellites and also the instrumentation. So if you're a techie and you really want to delve into how they actually are determining and measuring the sea ice levels, um, this is a site for you. Okay, so it's there. So here's an article, uh, unprecedented, gobsmacked, unbelievable. Changes in Antarctica sea ice could have dramatic impacts, say climate scientist Edward Doddridge. And uh, they talk, so this is basically talking about a bit about the history and, uh, you know, when we started measuring it, this is a guy with all of the adject, uh, um, all of the <laughs> terms, gobsmacked and so on, you know, you can think of your own and they interviewed him for this uh, article. But let's look at what, uh, let's look at some other things. Um, and I think I have the paper. Yeah, this is the, the this is a paper. Oh, it's by a different group. Okay. I think the Doddridge paper was under a paywall, so I didn't get that. Antarctic current supplying 40% of world's deep ocean with nutrients and oxygen, and it's slowing dramatically. So this is an article from a year ago. You know, they call it deep ocean tides. They supply almost half. Well, 40% of the world's um, new, uh, there's nutrients and oxygen, but the melting ice shells are slowing them down. Okay, so they talk about the importance of these deep ocean currents. Um, if the ocean had lungs, this would be one of them, right, around Antarctica. Um, this is an Australian study. Um, it was published in Nature. It predicted a 40% reduction in the strength of Antarctic bottom waters by 2050. Um, he also warned that the currents could eventually stop altogether. We're talking about a possible long-term extinction of an iconic water mass. Okay, so so that's, uh, you know, this paper, I guess. Um, and, well, there's this paper here. Abyssal ocean overturning slowdown and warming driven by Antarctic meltwater. So, you know, there's lots of details. This is an open source uh, paper. Um, and it talks about the importance of the abyssal, the deep ocean circulation. It's a key component of the global meridional overturning circulation or MOC. The Atlantic version is the AMOC, Atlantic meridional overturning circulation. It's, it's important for cycling heat, carbon, oxygen, and nutrients throughout the world's oceans. The strongest historical trend observed in the abyssal ocean is warming at high southern latitudes. Okay, and they talk about Antarctica bottom water regeneration, circumpolar and deep water, and uh, you know lots of images, uh, lots of data. So they've got um, the uh, the the uh, sea, sea ice and surface water mean temperatures, salinities temperatures and look at the look how much warming there is especially in the antarctic peninsula and all along the the uh, basically all along the coastline of antarctica so there's lots of um, lots of stuff in there we're approaching the tipping point marker for the collapse of key atlantic current so we're back to the arctic a vital atlantic current that includes the gulf stream and keeps our climate in check maybe giving off a warning sign of collapse this is an article from uh, a couple months ago, uh, a tipping point in the AMOC. So the AMOC, of course, carries warm water north from the Southern Hemisphere, releases heat in the Northern Hemisphere, freezes, freezing process concentrates salt, right? Because salt is rejected as seawater freezes, it rejects salt. So the water left around the ice that's just formed is saltier, it's cold, so it sinks to the bottom of the ocean floor. Uh, driving the thermohaline circulation system, the conveyor belt. Okay, so there have sediment records show that at times the AMOC is shut down abruptly, leading to major climate shifts in mere, mere decades. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we're getting right now.
We could be veering to this scenario again, potentially as early, well, as early as 2025. I think it's it might be happening and we'll only notice it uh, in the rearview mirror. We'll only see it in the rearview mirror. So they published this study. They found that the flow of fresh water into the Atlantic Ocean at a latitude of 34 degrees south, the latitude where South Africa sits, may indicate a key warning sign for an impending AMOC collapse. So they measured um, that uh, they, the team found that about 25 years before the AMOC collapses, this flow reaches a minimum, and we're seeing, uh, you know, a minimum starting to occur in this region. Okay, so this is like a marker or an early warning signal. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they say here, if the AMOC were to collapse in the near future, consequences would be dire. Without the AMOC, the Northern Hemisphere would get colder. Southern Hemisphere would get warmer by a lesser degree though. Europe would be re hit really hard, cooling between five to 10 degrees Celsius within a century. That's 9 to 18 Fahrenheit within a century, probably within a few decades. Um, and uh, it would change precipitation around the globe, like the uh, intertropical convergence zone would shift uh, southward, right? It's sort of like the, 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 the equatorial or, or, or the uh, band, you know, the latitude, it's a band around the earth at a certain latitude with a certain variability of range and a certain distribution, and that would shift southwards. So the monsoons in many countries would fail and the, the rain would shift further south. So we're talking about major implications for, for Earth's climate. Catastrophic climate doom loops could start in just 15 years. Climate tipping points, the Amazon, Greenland ice sheet, these things are all, you know, on the on the table for our lifetimes basically okay so lots of uh lots of questions here and uh i sent this out uh in a tweet um you know a few days ago i believe and uh i noticed there's there's huge interest in it here's the tweet we were in disbelief antarctica is behaving in a way we've never seen before can it recover and, uh, you know, over 28,000 uh, views and uh, 150 comments. Uh, you can read some of the comments, uh, you know, mostly uh, a lot. There's a lot of denier comments. Deniers have taken over a lot of uh, Twitter slash X. But anyway, this is very, very key uh, information. And, uh, you know, if you're trying to do a climate risk assessment for any region or you know, location or city on the planet, you absolutely have to consider the global tipping points because they're going to really throw a, a wrench into the finely tuned uh, watch-like gear mechanisms of the Earth's climate system. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Please donate at PayPal to support my uh, research and videos. And uh, I'll say uh, goodbye for now. Oh, and uh, yeah, a lot, lot's going on. I mean, I don't have hot water, I don't have heat, but it's it's not too bad here in Ottawa. Uh, I should just show you my, uh, I don't know if you can see it. I wrapped my hand in gauze. Uh, I learned a very important lesson. Uh, don't stick your hand in front of a growling dog's uh, mouth, even if it's your own cute little Newton dog. Uh, you know, I was at the park uh, a couple of days ago and he was uh, playing with this dog, you know, very happily until uh, sticks appeared and they both started fighting over a stick and growling. I had Newton was wearing his harness and I had him leashed. The other dog wasn't. They started sort of snar snarling at each other. I pulled Newton away. Um, I guess I reached down to grab his um, collar and uh, missed, and he was looking at the other dog, pointed away from me, and I guess I stuck my hand down in front of his mouth, and he took a big lunge and 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 uh, grabbed my uh, <laughs> grabbed my hand. So no stitches. Uh, doesn't look like it's infected. Um, so uh, you know. <laughs>
live and learn. I, I don't really blame him. It's more of, uh, you know, it's more of a newbie dog owner's, uh, you know, you don't think your dog, you forget your dog is actually a wild animal. And, uh, you know, if the dog is, is growling and snarling, you know, certainly don't put any body parts in front of its mouth because, you know, the dog should, doesn't know the, the old ad adage, uh, you know, don't bite the hand that fe <laughs> feeds you. I guess he's got to, got to learn that too. So, uh, anyway, thank you for listening and, uh, yeah, please, uh, you know, go to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donate at PayPal to support my, uh, research and, uh, videos. Thanks again. And, uh, Bye for now.